I want the New World Order to know that as for me and mine, we're committed. Your threats, your intimidation, your dirty tricks have only lit a fire in my belly and my spirit and my heart and my soul to fully commit. I thought I was fully committed, but I am even more committed than ever. I'm going to work even harder, and I am never going to surrender until I draw my last breath in eternal resistance to your evil. And there's no doubt. Look at all your works. Look at your fruits. Look at what you have done. Look at who you are. Your masters have staged a string of hundreds of terror attacks, the majority of which have been completely declassified. We just had the 41st anniversary of our own government with Israel, now declassified, attacking the USS Liberty premeditatedly. Even the Chicago Tribune's reported knowingly trying to send it to the bottom to blame it on Egypt and start World War III. But by the grace of God, those true sailors, those true patriots, true spirit of 1776 kept that ship, the most highly decorated in U.S. history. That's more than the Lexington, folks, more than John Paul Jones's little navy, more highly decorated than them. They kept that ship afloat for hour after hour after hour while they were attacked by fighter bombers and descent miseries, mirage, torpedo boats as you killed them, as you blew 30-foot holes with torpedoes in them, as they went into fiery rooms to close the bulkheads to keep it alive, as those men that went down there to shut those bulkheads burned to death, literally on fire, turning the wheels on the wall, on the doors to lock them down and dying. Men trapped below, men with broken legs crawling down through wreckage into the water to get their friends out. Those are true patriots. Those are true men of honor that you attacked, you bastards in CENTCOM, you bastards at the Pentagon, you murdering filth, you've totally sold your souls to the darkest wickedness. It's unimaginable. Look at how in 17 years, 17 years of siege, more than 2 million dead Iraqis, more than a million in the last five plus years, Madeleine Albright admitting 700,000 children had died from the sanctions in 97 and saying it was a good thing. And she was there. And then you write memos saying we can torture people to death. We can crush two-year-olds' bodies with pliers. We can rape them in front of their families. And you sit there and laugh about it. It's funny. You think that's power? You think that's strength? You think when we've got a government and an intelligence system that does things like that, that any of you are safe? You think when there's nothing holding you back from looting the Treasury and the Pentagon Treasury, and when there's lawless corruption, you think you're being paid off troops? with big mountains of cash for no reason, you're being inducted, you're being included in the evil, you're being made accessories to it, you're being bound, you're being bred, you're being trained, you're being twisted and forged in the fires of hell itself. Think about what you've become. Think about what you've turned into. Think about, and even if you didn't weren't engaged in any of these crimes and you're listening, you gave support to the war. You gave support to the lies. You are now accomplices to it, and you can't deny it. They admitted they did all of this. They admit millions are dead. They admit they're destroying the dollar by design. They admit they're destroying the sovereignty in our borders by design. There's no doubting it. They made the choice public. They publicly said torture was good. They publicly said secret arrest was good. The Army admitted that 97 plus percent of those picked up at checkpoints and taken to 30 plus camps in Iraq were just families that didn't have their papers in order and you took them into groups of monsters that had hellish pleasure at their expense killing people beating them to death raping them with large objects covered with acid that's in the army's own report raping people with acid torturing children this is right out of hell and then you say, we're the enemies? You say, we're hurting America? They are seducing you. They are getting you to join their forces. They are twisting you. They are turning us into pure evil for greater jobs they have in the future. This has been done by behavioral psychologists at the highest levels, committing you to evil. I'll use a popular culture analogy. Episode 3, Revenge of the Sith. When the Emperor tells Darth Vader to go, who just minutes before been Anakin Skywalker, tells him to go to the Jedi Temple and kill all of the children, and that that would increase his power, that that would turn him completely to evil. The Emperor says, we ought to find that clip. You know, then you will have the power. Then you will truly be a Sith. And he goes in there and he kills children, and then it's symbolic. His eyes then turn yellow from blue. 
He then becomes a demon. He fully turns himself over to the dark side. And that is exactly what your masters had you do. What do you think the writers of these big archetypal top films? George Lucas said his films are so popular because he takes real things and puts it into a science fiction space opera fantasy. It's the new fairy tales. But this isn't a fairy tale what you've done. Did Darth Vader torture the children? No, he just cut them in little pieces. You go further than even the nightmare villain of a movie. Let's talk about reality. The Nazis tortured and killed people and did medical experiments on children. And they would send hundreds of doctors every few months to Joseph Mengele's giant sprawling medical facility that was built on the back of a concentration camp, a labor camp, and he would train doctors and have them torture children to death and quote, experiments, sewing them together, burning them in ovens, torturing them, testing drugs on them, putting them in ice water, lining them up and shooting them, and they called it the cement of blood. The Nazis admitted it was to then send larger cadres out of the medical facility to go out and do it on a wider scale. They began their death camps by 35, taking the old, the infirm, the mentally retarded, people with genetic disorders, cripples, and doing medical experiments on them. What does CPS do? Admitted in the New York News, taking children and testing drugs and pesticides on them till they die. That creates cadres. What did the atomic soldiers, what did that do? Having the doctors knowing it was going to kill the troops with the radiation, putting them in radiation chambers, having them stand out just a half mile, a mile from the blast, having them go out and breathe it. See, the German doctors had already been through that programming. They were brought to the U.S. They then headed up the programs. We didn't have Americans at the time in 1946, 47, 48 that would do that. And then those German doctors, they were the dark seed who they'd been trained in evil, who then trained our doctors. And the programs got larger and larger and larger of people that once they've nerve-gassed, they tell a young private, go in here, you're going to get three days off. They hit him with sarin. He dies. They dissect his body, tell his family he died of the flu. Thousands of cases of that admitted in England and the U.S. Now you've created a cadre of pure evil, killing our own troops. And so that evil replicates and spreads. We, the good men and women, the people that love liberty and love beauty and love honor and love goodness and who hate evil, we have to spread our message. We have to train others. We have to build our force to resist their dark force. We have to commit ourselves and even of our families, if that's what it takes, we have to commit totally as sacrifices for the tree of liberty. We have to throw ourselves against these dark hordes. We have to throw caution to the wind and ask God to fill us with his spirit to guide us against this ultimate tyranny. I want all of you with me now to ask God's spirit of love and light and goodness and creation and honor and creativity to enter us and to lead God and direct us and all of us together commit eternally to the war against tyranny and the war against those that abuse the weak and abuse women and children and those that dumb down societies and bring darkness. I pledge eternal resistance to evil. I pledge my body, my soul, my heart, everything I am. I pledge my family. I am fully committed. I will never turn away from my goal no matter where it leads me. And I only ask God, I never ask God for anything except to lead God and direct me and that I be a vessel against this evil. Because make no mistake, this is a spiritual battle. Our enemies say that. They believe it. It is. All I've ever asked God is to lead God and direct me. But I do ask God to protect my family. I'm committed. I'm, not, I'm never going to stop. But I, I ask God that if anyone is to be taken in this, if anyone is to be killed, grabbed, tortured, turned into a a mess, you know, they could take me, torture me for years, have me come out and say whatever they wanted, know that that could happen, know I've been threatened with that, but I just pray that God at least put a hedge of protection up around my family. They don't deserve it. But I have said, and I say here on air, no matter what the course, I'm not backing off. Threats to my family, intimidation only makes me intensify what I am doing. And when I went to Bilderberg two years ago, I felt a great quickening in my heart and soul and mind, and I crossed a line when I bullhorned them and stood up to them, and I felt the spiritual threshold that I stepped across. And I felt a much greater threshold yesterday as Bilderberg ended, and as I came uh, you know, back home, 
that I have crossed another threshold, a greater threshold, and have gone to an entirely new level of commitment in this fight. And I felt remnants of evil and remnants of worldliness and remnants of wickedness that were in me fall away. I have been sanctified. I have been purified. And that doesn't mean I'm pure, but I'm one step closer to being pure. And I am committed, and I turn my life and my soul and my destiny completely completely into the hands of the creator of the universe. I have gone in and through the fires of the New World Order repeatedly throughout my life, and every time I have recommitted, no matter what the threats, no matter what the intimidation, I have been re-energized, and I want all of you to experience this. I want you to experience what it is to truly be a warrior for liberty and the weak. I want you to experience what it is to truly commit yourself to goodness.